Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Tolef here is going to talk to us about Deb Debian Org. So thank you, Tolef. Thank you. Uh, I uh, figured I'd start by actually putting the, the number, which you all have memorized by now, I hope, on my slides, so that um, <coughs> both so, oops, I'll turn off the mouse pointer. Uh, both so it's public, but also so that uh, if anybody wants to do key signing, they know that that's my key, that's my hash at least. So come compare. Uh, also, I'd like to congratulate uh, another team member on, of DSA today, uh, Peter Prater Wiesel just passed his um, examination for a PhD, which is pretty awesome. So, okay, with that. Let's jump into dev.debian.org. Um, let's see. There. So, what's the problem that we're actually trying to solve with dev.debian.org? Um, well, in, and it's actually bigger than just dev.debian.org. It's uh, a large mission of what Debian is trying to do is we're trying to distribute software to users because it's, it's great to run the software on our own machines, but it's even better if somebody can actually use it. Um, our current way of distributing software isn't very resource effective. We push out a lot of, of binaries, which nobody is ever going to see or use. Um, this is because the way the current mirroring, mirroring network works, we push out, push out the um, uh, we push out the, the, all, all the binaries for all the architectures, even though nobody might ever download that binary off uh, that particular mirror. And this becomes even worse now that we're adding debug packages, we're adding uh, ports, we have large data packages. Um, and this is problematic because, I mean, bandwidth isn't free, uh, storage isn't free. In some cases, we have mirrors who to stop being able to mirror architectures or mirror Debian at all, just because it, it grows too large. Um, in addition, those existing solutions, uh, they have a couple of, of problems with them, which are hard. They're either used to visible or they're hard to detect. And those two problems are inconsistent mirrors, where you run apps get update, and you end up having a hash sum mismatch. And then you run it again, and the problem's hopefully gone away, or maybe it hasn't. But if you run this from a script and you detect errors, your script has just broken. Out of date mirrors are much harder to detect. Um, you run apt get update and try to upgrade, and three days pass, and you see no updates, and you don't actually know whether that's because there hasn't been any updates or because just the mirror is broken. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. So, um, clearly this calls for another standard. Uh, and in the grand uh, tradition of how we fix this, we, we do add another standard, which is where Deb Debian all comes in. Um, it's a, it pretends to be a complete mirror of almost all of our packages. That's I, I'm saying pretend because it's not actually true. Um, almost all, because it doesn't include snapshot, it doesn't include the uh, archive Debian org, which is the historical archive of packages. Um, and also, it isn't actually a mirror. It is a CDN, a constant distribution network, which sits in front of FTP, Debian org, the ports, and all of that. And whenever somebody requests something from it, it downloads it from the upstream. And I'm going to show the design in a, in a second. The primary motivations were to fix the user problems that we were seeing. Uh, partly because DSA is one of the users of we run a lot of machines, and we use Debian, obviously, and we were seeing those problems, and they were annoying. Um, 
But in addition, um, we had a couple of other motivations. Uh, I wanted it to be a kind of one-stop shop. Uh, if you look at the traditional, the traditional systems, there is no single place to download all our packages. You find some on Snapshot, you find the ports archive is somewhere else, the security mirrors somewhere else again, and so on. Um, and it's slightly bad motivation, but I, I used to work for Fastly, uh, who runs the CDN. And I had a tool, and I wanted to see what kind of stuff I could do with that tool. So the design. I hope you can actually read this. Um, we have a client running app. Usually, it can be you know it's HTTP. All of this is HTTP. It runs to see. It hits the local CDN node wherever that is. Uh, we're currently using Fastly. They have machines and pops all around the world almost true, they don't have anything really in Africa, which is slightly annoying from here, but they have a bunch in Northern America, they have, a, they have some in South America, they have uh, five, I think, in Australia, um, Asia, Singapore, Tokyo, uh, various places in Europe. So you hit whatever node is closest to you, that again goes to a secondary node, which you never actually see, which is located close by to the upstream. And the reason for this, and not for having this local CDN node go directly to the backend, is that between those two, there are links maintained, which means that these are pre-scaled, so you don't have to open a new TCP connection for that. You, don't, you only have to do the TCP three-way handshake here to a fairly local node. You don't have to do it all the way to security Debian org, which might be, you know, in Europe or in the US or somewhere. So it means that even though you're going through a secondary node, it might actually still be faster than going directly. The paths here for where the various uh, archives are exposed are different. So there's logic here which says that slash Debian goes to FTP Debian org, slash Debian ports go to ports, and so on for the security and debug archives as well. It's kind of a pretty simple, simple setup, um, and mostly works, works pretty well. We didn't really encounter that many problems, um, though, of course, so, of course, we, we encountered some. The reason I'm listing security Debian org there is that when you do, when you run a CDN, the way you send traffic to a CDN is you do a C name to a, a name provided by them. Now, for those of you who know DNS fairly well, you know that you can't combine C names with other kinds of records. You can't have an A record and a C name. You can't have an MX record and a C name. And security Debian org receives email. So what we managed to do is we got the apt authors to add support for uh, looking up a serve record, which is a way for where you can add service records for a given domain name. So you can say that the SIP server for Debian org is this machine over there. You don't actually have to look. So it's a more generalized uh, version of MX records where you can expose any kind of service. So apt in, in Wheezy, no, sorry, not Wheezy. Uh, stretch and your support says. Another problem we had is that the, the UI of managing this is really cumbersome. Um, Fastly provides an API, so we fixed that by writing code to integrate with that. The third one is because this is infrastructure run by somebody else, it's inherently non free, right? It's a service somebody provides. It's not, we can run, we, there's nothing. Here, which means that, which is that we couldn't run, and the hard bit here is not actually in the software. It's that you need to have machines all around the world. You need to maintain this. You need to have agreements on peering with providers and all that. And that's a business is in a much much better position to, to do that than we are. IPv6 support used to be a problem. Um, 
past days IPv6 support has improved a lot over the last month. So it's, it's certainly getting there. Uh, and on the non-free infrastructure, we're actually also doing this for uh, DNS already. And most of the time, this doesn't, it's one of those, yes, it would be nice if, if everything was, was free and, you know, but I'm not entirely sure how an open source model would work for infrastructure. So um, right now it's working. It's kind of in testing mode. Uh, I haven't announced it that widely before. Um, but there's obviously some future. Uh, you can't really see that very well, can you? There's no way to turn on the front lights, is there? OK. Um, yeah, so this is, this is, a, is a rocket for those of you who can't see it. Uh, it hopefully isn't actually the future because this is a Saturn IV um, intercontinental ballistic missile from uh, the only, the, uh, it's an air and space museum just outside of, of Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so it's from the 1960s sometime. Uh, we might, maybe we might replace uh, HTTP reader and the Mariner network eventually. That's not an explicit goal here because there's not, there's no, there's no namespace conflict between Debian org and the Mariner network or any other kind of, of mirroring service. If it gets popular, then, you know, the alternatives will go away, but if they do, then they go away. If they don't, then, you know, we'll have multiple services. Um, it currently doesn't support TLS. It's something which is really, really hard to do on a traditional mirror network because we don't have a way of distributing the certificates and the keys to all the various mirrors in a good way. That's much easier with the CDN because you're dealing with a single entity on the other side rather than how, however many mirror operators we have. I also want to add support for snapshot and, and archive, um, but who knows when that comes. It's not really that hard, it just needs doing, like so many other things. Um, it's possible to, to contribute. Uh, I'm working on getting it so that it's actually mirrored on, on Alias. It currently isn't. I think all, at least all DDs have access to, to cloning that URL. Um, but it's going to be on Alias fairly soon. It's a small script, script which, and a YAML file which contains a configuration for, uh, that, that controls the setup. It comes back to the web UI suck part. Um, how to use it? Uh, it's pretty easy. You just point your, your app repository at dev Debian org instead of FTP, UK Debian org or whatever because it, it, it mirrors. Uh, you can also go there with the browser and it will tell you uh, what you can use for, uh, I think we include the information on, on the other, it, for, for security and so, and so on. It's Debian security, Debian ports. Um, uh, thanks to Fastly who sponsored the service and thanks to Finn who are my new employer as of a month ago for actually sending me here and paying my airfare. And that's, it's almost it. Uh, let me see, I was planning on doing a live demo where, you know, let's see, okay, that didn't appear, but we can do, we can do that that go away and so so let's see if we can do more like that so this has I'm running at get in a loop because it doesn't have very much traffic right now um, so it has we actually get live stats on on how much traffic it's doing uh, we also have so let's see there that has the historical data on how much traffic we're seeing. So we have a little bit of traffic. We are mostly using it for, uh, for Debian org hosts, but you know, it's public, it's sponsored, so it doesn't cost us anything. And I'd love to see more people use it. 
uh, feedback is all, always welcome, uh, both if it works well, but also if you have questions or it doesn't work well. Uh, so, questions, etc. Thank you. Um, on the slide, you mentioned uh, the uh, support for stretch. You only mentioned main, so I'm just checking back again to see if the other components are supported or not. They are. Okay. So it it supports everything. Uh, all it it doesn't actually have any knowledge of what the archive layout inside of of that particular URL is. So whenever FTP master adds adds uh, bullseye, it's automatically going to be supported and all that. Thank you. I think that during the DSA presentation, you talked about using different CDNs, but you've only talked about Fastly here. So I was wondering if you were, on, were planning on using other services or just because what, what happens if Fastly just dies? Um, if Fastly dies, we'll use something else, obviously, um, because we want to. So we're not using any of the advanced features of, of Fastly, so I'm, I'm not particularly worried about, uh, about being able to transition somewhere else. The reason, or about most, most of the reason I haven't done so already and set it up on others, is that as an employee of Fastly, it uh, would not be okay for me to go and sign up to other CDN providers. So uh, other DSA members have more experience with the other alternatives, and we already have sponsors from uh, we, Planet, I think, runs on, on Max CDN, for instance. And we have offers from others as well. So uh, while it currently runs on Fastly, that's, there's very, very little which binds this to, to Fastly. And uh, Africa support? I can, uh, so, uh, let's see. If that works. I don't actually mean to advertise so much for Fastly, but uh, let's see if we can make that. Yeah, so they have a, uh, a list of planned locations. Uh, I believe that either Cape Town or Johannesburg is on that list. Uh, I do not know what the timing of that is. Uh, but, you know. Last question. Hi. Um, thanks for the presentation, I guess. Two mini, one question, one remark. Uh, one question is, do you have a preference for this replacing the mirror infrastructure? I actually kind of do, even though I used to run a mirror. And uh, one comment is you mentioned that HTTPS is difficult in the mirror infrastructure world because you can't really give the private keys to like a bajillion mirrors. But if you use uh, HTTP reader, then they can redirect to a uh, host name they do control, and then they can have their own cert. That's correct. Uh, HTTP reader has the problem that uh, it's somewhat sporadically, sporadically maintained. Um, so, yes, if we had more HTTPS mirrors, we could do it that way, um, or we can do it uh, with a single, single provider like this. Um, would, you want this to replace mirrors, right? I, 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 w I would not be unhappy if, if the mirroring infrastructure was replaced with something like this. But on the other hand, I'm not going to go out there and tell people to stop working on mirrors if you enjoy working on mirrors, right? So it's, it's one of those, it, if it turns out that way, it won't make me sad, but I'm also not going to go, go around telling people that, no, no, don't work on this thing you enjoy working on. But if, there, if mirrors start bit rotting, then you know, they're going to go away, so. We are out of time, so thank you very much, Todd, for your presentation.